Hi, as many of you have noticed, the option under reports, W-2 reports has changed. Um, before, prior to the 6.80.0 release, um, the option under reports was called W-2 reports and submission. This has now been changed and it's currently called W-2 reports. And within W-2 reports, there are four options. W-2 archive individual forms, W-2 forms output files, W-2 mailable forms, W-2 report and submission. And our goal um, in this video is to go through each of these options and discuss them and talk about the, the need for them and why you would use them and what they look like. Um, we're gonna start in um, order that makes most sense for processing. So instead of starting from the top of the list here, I'm actually gonna start with W-2 report and submission. So this option really hasn't changed from prior the prior um, look of um, what you're used to with W-2 report and submission. Um, there's four options, the report option, the submission option, the forms option, and the XML option. So, you know, districts are still going to use the report option just like they always have. Um, probably they're going to go down the first time they run the report option and check the report employees with errors only box. This will generate the report for any employees that do have errors. And then they'll want to come back and run the report option and unselect that report employees with errors only so that it um, runs the report for all employees. The next option is the submission option. And you can see as we select the, the different available options, the screen changes slightly. So this submission option is the exact same as um, what it was before. This is the option that districts will use to create their submission file for the SSA, for CCA, and for RITA. I'm gonna jump down to the XML option. This is the option then that is going to be used for printing um, if you are using the ed edges accountability. So this has not changed again from, um, you know, past, if you're using Edge's accountability, you'll create the XML file, and then you'll want to import that XML file into Edge's accountability and use the options within their software for the printing of the employee forms, the employer forms, and the city forms. When it comes to the forms option, um, we're actually going to come back to this. I think it'll make more sense if we talk about this second. Um, so I'm going to skip over this forms option um, and, and come back to that here shortly. So under the reports option, I'm going to go back down under W-2 reports. You'll see an option now called W-2 mailable forms. So this is the option that is going to be used if districts and or ITCs are printing um, their W-2 forms. These would be the employee copies. Um, so the eight and a half by 14 Z forms, those pressure sealed forms um, that you're gonna distribute to your employees. So the employee copies, again, we'll, we're gonna use the W-2 mailable forms if you're printing them outside of a third party or at like Edge's accountability software. Um, you'll see that there's an option for a report title, your ID numbers, the kind of employer, um, the sort option. So how do you want this printable um, employee file to be sorted? Um, so from the drop down, then you can select the option that's going to be easiest to um, for the districts to the to distribute those. Um, the report year, the employer um, address information, and then it gives you the option to show the building and department code 
on the forms themselves as well. So this is gonna print on the outside envelope um, area, right um, near the address. So if that's something that's gonna help, you know, maybe distribute those W-2s um, and, they, and districts want that to be printed on the outside of the W-2, um, you can check that box um, for to have that printed. The include fringe benefits box. Um, so th are there any um, fringe benefits that you want to be checked, or I'm sorry, printed on um, the W-2 itself in box 14? Um, if so, you would check that box and then go down and add the appropriate payroll item configuration codes. Um, then we'll, those will populate in the grid below um, and print uh, accordingly on all those individual um, W-2s. In this case, since we're you know, generating a print file for the entire district, um, you would wanna leave the select employee um, area blank, as well as selecting specific pay groups. So once we have all this information confirmed and entered, um, we would go down then to the generate mailable forms option and select that. This is going to create then that um, print file that you would then, you know, it's gonna be saved to your computer somewhere um, and then you're gonna upload to that printing software or your computer, basically the, the um, computer you're printing your your um, employee forms on. Okay, I did wanna point out that once you generate um, the mailable forms, if we go back to reports and we go to W-2 reports again, there's an option called W-2 form output files. Once that mailable form is created, it's placed in this W-2 form output files area. So you can see here that this was the file that was created. It's now placed in this output file area, sort of like the, the holding place. We're gonna come back to this and talk about this option um, in more detail, but I wanted to point it out, you know, as we're creating these, where those, those are going. So that's to print your employee copies. So those eight and a half by 14 Z fold, you know, folded, sealed um, copies. Now, if you're using USPSR um, again, and you need to print your employer copies, um, we're gonna go back to under W-2 reports, we're gonna go back to the W-2 report in submission and we're going to um, select at the top the option called forms. Okay. So um, again, you can see that the screen changes slightly. Um, you want to verify that all the information at the top um, is correct, as well as you know, make sure you're including any fringe benefits so that those get printed um, in box 14. And then you'll leave the select employee, um, individual employees and pay groups, leave that blank. When we click the um, generate W-2 forms down below, this generates then a print file that you can submit to the printer um, that's going to print on eight and a half by 11 blank sheets of paper, um, four up, so four copies to a page. Okay. Likewise, like we just talked about the employee copies, the employer copies will also go then to um, that W-2 form output file area. So this is the second file then that we've created. Okay, so you can see the naming convention is slightly different. Um, this is gonna be generated um, or created when we select the W-2 mailable forms um, option, and this is generated 
um, when we select the W-2 report and submission forms option. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go back and now we're gonna talk lastly, again, this is using you know, USPSR to, to print your forms. Um, we're gonna go back to the W-2 report and submission option and we're gonna talk about printing your city forms, so your city copies. So we're gonna, again, make sure that we select the forms option and you know, verify all the information is correct above. Include your fringe benefits if you've done that you know, in, in the past for the, your other um, uh, W-2 sets of copies. Leave the individual and the pay group options blank. And then down in this select by city tax entity code area, we're gonna actually specify the first city that we wanna print our city forms for. So what this field is referring to is if you go to core, payroll item configuration, and I open up a city record, this tax entity code is what the system is using to determine what W-2 forms to print. So I'm gonna close out of this and I'll go back then to W-2 report and submission. And I'm gonna click on forms again. And you can see here, we'll go back to that select by city tax entity code. We'd enter our first city tax entity code and then click generate W-2 forms. This again, like we've talked about with the employee and the employer, will go to that um, W-2 form output files area um, for you to then, you know, print and so forth. You'll wanna run this city option um, for all the city entity codes um, you need to print forms for. So this is gonna, you know, involve you running this or the form being, the file being generated um, for run multiple times if you have multiple cities that you need W-2 forms printed for. So you'll run this um, once for each city that you need those forms on uh, created. I did want to point out in the upper right hand corner, there's now a grid um, that allows you to see your W-2 print jobs, um, the, the date and the time that they were created, um, the time and date that they completed, and then the status. Okay. So once you have the files created, we're gonna go to reports and we're gonna go back to W-2 reports and we're gonna go to that W-2 form output files area. So again, we talked about when those files, those print files are created, they get placed out in this W-2 form output files area. And it's, you know, they're basically waiting out here. Um, it's a kind of a holding area um, saying, what, what, what do we wanna do with them now? So we have three different options. The first is to download the file. So this file then can be downloaded and then uploaded to the printer to print the forms themselves. The second is to send this file to the file archive. So um, when you click this option, then it's gonna send it to the, the file archive and that goes then out to under utilities File archive, the payroll archive, and then you would find the year and then the calendar year and reports. So you would see then that W-2 um, file that we've created um, in the file archive under the payroll archive tab and the appropriate year. 
I'm going to go back then to that mailable, oops, not mailable, I'm sorry, the W2 output file form um, file area. Um, I did want to mention that we are limiting the number of files per option per user um, that will be retained in this um, W2 form output files area. So it is limited to two. So only two options per user can be contained out in this area, you know, in the output file area. Um, this is just to prevent, you know, you mistakenly sending the wrong file to the file archive, printing the wrong file, um, you know, it it cluttering up this area um, and, you know, mistakes can happen. So again, it is limited to output files per option per user. If by some, you know, chance something is created in error and that needs to be deleted, um, you can simply click the X and that will delete this, you know, take that out of um, this grid um, permanently. Okay, so again, these forms then, you know, your mailable forms are the nine and a half by 14 pressure sealed forms for the employee copy. The um, employer copies and the city copies are gonna be the nine, eight and a half by 11 plain sheets of paper. Okay, the four up copies. The last option then that I wanted to, to point out is the W-2 archive individual forms option. So if you remember in years past, there was a special file that was created from accountability and then um, imported into the redesign for those districts that are using the kiosk for their employees to be able to view their W-2s within the kiosk. So we've tr kind of taken the extra steps out of that. Um, and this option allows you to create a file and then it get placed in the appropriate place for the kiosk to automatically go out and look at and find so that your the districts that use the kiosk their employees are able to, to view their um, W-2s. So again, um, you'll wanna make sure that all of your ID numbers, um, your kind of employer match the way that the printed forms were, um, you know, the information that was printed on the printed forms. You'll also wanna pay particular attention to the sort options. Um, make sure that you're selecting the same sort option when you're creating the archive forms as you selected when you generated your print file. Um, that assures that the control numbers are going to match. So what the, the employee sees as their control number on the printed form um, that they were given matches the control number that they see on the kiosk when they view their W-2 um, there. So again, make sure that your sort options match um, when you're creating the print file and generating the, the archive file. Um, again, just double and triple check that you know, your information, um, the district information is correct. Make sure you're including any of those fringe benefits that you included on the print file. And then down at the bottom, it gives you the ability to schedule the job. So it's gonna default like it always does to the current day and the current time. And then you're gonna click schedule job. So this job then goes out to the job scheduler. So under utilities, we can see the job scheduler and I can see here then that job and the status of that job that I created. Okay, this file then once it's complete, it also goes to the file archive.
And when we go to the file archive, we can go to W2 archive, and we're going to look at the appropriate, you know, tax year. And we can see then that all of those individual W2s are there and they're ready then to be used by the kiosks and your um, the employees can view those um, when they log in. Okay, that is all I have um, to cover. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any questions at all, you know we're always, we're here and we're happy to help. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you.